the US moving to push out strategic petroleum reserves in coordination with allies, but oil markets don't care. Brent crude now at around 110 US dollars a barrel. Why aren't we seeing reaction in the price? More supply coming onto the market, but Brent's still up around 5% as we speak. Hello to you. Yeah, I think the big problem with these SPR releases is that they're temporary, right? They're not a sustained um, ad add to the barrel of supply on the market, right? So the, the, the market quickly looks past these draws that are certainly needed, but they're short term um, in, in their effect on, on the global supply demand balance. Now, it's important to keep in mind that in February, we saw balances were relatively um, uh, supply and demand was relatively in balance through the month, and this was largely driven by a large increase in exports. So um, this is a reversal from December and January. Markets have come back into to balance fundamentally, but obviously prices right now are trading on far more than fundamentals. The issues in Ukraine and the probability that we could see uh, cuts in volume out of Russia are certainly putting upward pressure on prices right now. How much leverage do you think that the Biden administration has with oil companies at this point? I don't think he has a lot of leverage and it kind of depends where, where we're talking about geographically. Domestically, the United States has a great ability to boost output, right? And the government could assist with that a little bit. Um, but the Biden administration has not shown much willingness to want to do that. With that being said, by the end of this year, I do expect that production in North America is likely going to see growth of around 1.4 million barrels per day relative to the end of last year. So the North America will be a key point of production growth, but I'm not sure that the Biden administration um, has much uh, re uh, ha has much of a desire to to push producers right now, given the fact that you have this um, uh, you have this pressure from the left to to remain focused on on climate goals right now. Of course, that could change if the energy inflation problem in the United States continues to persist and his poll numbers continue to struggle ahead of the midterms. I think it's difficult um, not to overstate how important that is at this point, because basically what we heard in the hours after the State of the Union were members of the president's base, the progressive base, who have been behind his moves on climate change and climate action and the movement and transition to green energy, coming out and saying, where was our agenda in the State of the Union? So that's very important. That's part of his base. That's what got him elected. And frankly, it's been one of the most vociferous voices um, uh, to continue to support the president's agenda, in spite of the fact that Americans at the pump are facing higher energy costs than they have in years. So that is a problem for him. Um, as you say, he has a lack of leverage, not just with U.S. oil majors and gas majors, but also with OPEC, because what we saw over the last 24 hours was OPEC in their, uh, in their strategic meetings, in their technical meetings, deciding to keep production quotas on track. They're going to keep, uh, they're going to stick to plan, if you will. And that's in spite of all the lobbying that the Biden administration has done that we know about. And also, of course, the overarching narrative, which is whether or not, as you say, the volumes coming out of Russia will be stopped um, by potentially um, some kind of Western sanctions. So take a step back at this point. How dangerous is this, do you think, for the president specifically as we head into the midterms? Oh, I think energy inflation is a huge problem for the Biden administration, and I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. Let's just talk about OPEC really quickly. Right now, they're walking a very tight rope. Obviously, you have Saudi Arabia split between Russia and the United States. Obviously, Saudi Arabia is a historical ally of the United States in the Middle East. Um, but they only have, excluding Iran, OPEC plus only has around 3 million barrels per day in additional spare capacity, right? So they want to be very careful how they draw down on that, on that spare capacity bucket that they have available, right? So the quicker they do that now, the less they're going to have available down the line. Um, also keep in mind that you do have this big question of Iran, right? Are we going to see an agreement? Uh, a, a new JCPOA, I have no idea. It's definitely up in the air right now. But if we do see some kind of agreement with Iran, 
that presents another, say, 1.3 million barrels per day onto the market. Now, I think the Biden administration right now has not pushed OPEC very hard, but you know, everything is off the table now that we're seeing this war in Ukraine and 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 you know, just an acceleration in energy prices. I you know, I don't know if the Biden administration is going to feel like they're they're going to push the Saudis harder than they have so far. That's an open question. But from OPEC's perspective, they have no incentive to to accelerate the rate at which they are boosting output at this point. And they tend to not like to be responsive to political events, although the issues in Ukraine are certainly extraordinary.